So let's talk about vowels. In the last video, we got sort of an introduction to what the IPA is. We took a tiny look at consonants and vowels as well. In this video, we're gonna dive way deeper into how the vowels sound, how they're produced in your mouth, and also talk a tiny bit about which languages actually use these vowels. Because in English, we definitely do not have all the vowels that exist. That would be crazy. Some languages can have a lot of vowels and other languages can have fewer vowels. For example, Japanese is an example of a language where you have a lot fewer vowels. They have a, i, u, e, o, while in English we have way more, in addition to also having diphthongs as well. A diphthong is when you have two vowels put together, because you can think of thong as a sound or a vowel, so if you have one, that would be a monothong. Mono is one, right? And a diphthong would be two. For example, monothong would be... For example, a monothong would be e as in fear, while a diphthong would be i as in sky. There is also something called a triphthong, which is when you have three vowels together. For example, in meow, you have e, a, u, meow. Let's start by looking at the vowel chart. So on the left side of the vowel chart, you have the vowels that are made with your tongue positioned in the front of your mouth. On the right side, you have the sounds that are produced with your tongue in the back of your mouth. And then in the middle, these are the sounds that are produced when your tongue is not in the back or in the front, but somewhere in the middle. And from the top to bottom, the scale from open to close here means how close your tongue is to the roof of your mouth, basically. So if we do the front close unrounded sound here, that's e, and then as you lower the tongue inside your mouth, you can see it goes from close, close mid, open mid to open. So if we lower our tongue slowly inside our mouth, e you'll notice that the vowel sound actually changes here, and we we perceive that as different sounds. We perceive e, 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 and a as four separate sounds. The way that vowels are made is that we have a varying degree of how open our mouth is, and we have a varying degree of how far in the front or in the back your tongue is. And the other big distinction here between a vowel and a consonant is that when you're making a vowel, there is no friction in your mouth. Like when you say there's a lot of friction in there between your tongue and some part of your mouth. It could be your lips, it could be the palate, it could be somewhere in the alveolar ridge. That's when you get the consonants. When you have no friction, that's what's called a vowel. You may notice that on most of these, there are actually two sounds in one place. They're pairs of sounds, and they're called unrounded and rounded. What this means is that the one on the left side has your lips being more relaxed, like this, and the one on the right side has your lips forming sort of a kissing mouth, like this. So you do this while you try to produce the sound. And this actually changes the vowel quality, and we as humans can perceive those as two separate vowels. If I say e, 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 u, u, we can actually hear those as separate sounds. So we'll start from the top left here. What we've got now is a front close rounded and a front close unrounded. The front close unrounded here is a very common sound in the English language and also in a lot of languages around the world. This is the sound e that we have in words like hear or feel, real. It's the e sound. This sound exists in so many languages I can't even start to list them up. But if we take a look at the rounded version here, like I said before, Rounded just means that you sort of round your lips, so you just do the same thing inside your mouth. You say e, but then your lips, you have to try to force your lip muscles to move while your tongue is in place. So you say e, 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 e. And this e sound, it's a sound that, like in standard English, uh, by standard I mean standard American, British, Australian at least, uh, this sound is not really used that much. You may hear it in some dialects when they say the word few, they might say it like few. And for those with sharp ears, you might notice that e and 
ooh sound a bit different. The reason why they sound a bit different is that the one I'm making usually is e, which is your mouth being a bit more open. But if you read a bit about it, also if you listen to some of the sound examples that are on some websites like IPHR.com, they might actually pronounce it more like an e with your lips more closed. Uh, some languages do this. German has e as in uba. Chinese has this too, as in nu, meaning uh, woman. In some of the Scandinavian languages though, like uh, Norwegian and Swedish, this sound has your mouth being a bit more open, but still rounded, so it's e instead of u. But they're sort of the same thing anyways. So if we kind of skip the in-between vowels, because if you look at the vowel chart, you might see that some of the vowels are sort of in between. They're not on the actual grid lines, they're kind of in between there. We're gonna take a look at those a bit later. We're gonna move a bit further down in the vowel chart. This is the sound e, which we have in words like hair or care. In Scottish English, the diphthong e, which is e and e, are actually just straight e. So they would say things like mate instead of mate great instead of great. If we then do the rounded version of this, which like I said before, is a uh, tongue in your mouth stays the same, only your lips go rounded. E, uh. The uh sound here is not really a sound we have in English that much, but it's a sound that exists in a lot of other languages. We have the sound in languages like German, Scandinavian languages, uh, Turkish has it, it also exists in Korean as well. And similarly to the e vowel, this can also be sort of more open, e, or more closed, e, as well. Because you'll hear that in languages like German or Danish, it's more closed, e, but for example, in Swedish and Norwegian, it's more open, e, instead. And then if we open our mouths even more, we kind of get the same thing here. It just sounds sort of the same, but more open. So instead of e, e, it's e, e. And there are some dialects or accents of English where they would use this sort of e eh instead of e, eh, in words like care or hair, and they might say care or hair. You probably heard that before. And then of course the rounded version here is just e, eh, but with lips rounded. Uh. If we open up a tiny bit more, we get to ah. Ah is when your mouth is fully open. This is the ah that we have in words like father. The rounded vowel here, uh, is not very commonly used. Uh, it's not something you're gonna see a lot. In most languages, I'll imagine that you'll be wanting to learn. So these four pairs are the front vowels that you need to know. Now if you take a look here, you'll notice that in between a and e, there is also this a-e digraph, which is actually a sound that we have in English. It's sort of a mix between a and e. So you can think of this as going from a, you go to e, very slowly, a, and then you kind of stop right in the middle. What happens then is you can isolate this ah sound. And this is a sound that we have in English, so I can imagine you'll be very familiar with it. We have it in words like sad, bad, or grammar. You might hear that I pronounce it a tiny bit differently, and that's because in American English, ah sound is actually a bit raised, so it's a bit more open. In British English, it's a bit more lowered, so they would say sad, bad, mad. While in American, it's more sad, bad, mad. You can hear it's a bit higher. But they're still written with the same letter because they're just marginal differences, really. Compared to the front vowels, the back vowels are a bit less used. They're a bit less common, but we still have a few of them in English, and a lot of other languages use them, so it's very important to know. So if we start with the bottom right, this is basically the same sound we just had, this ah from father. Take this ah and then move your tongue back. So instead of ah, you get ah, ah, ah. You can of course round the vowel as well. So instead of ah, you get ah. Actually, if you speak more of a Midwestern kind of standard American accent, you might pronounce bother with more of a back in the throat, ah, bother. Well, it's kind of more like a New York slash Boston kind of bother. Uses this more ah sound, like bother instead of bother. If we now go a tiny bit up, we get this kind of uh sound that a lot of foreigners struggle with in English. In words like cut, butter, or stunt. This sort of uh sound. Almost like someone's stabbing you in the gut and you say uh. That's of course the unrounded. If you then take this uh, 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 and then you round this, you get the sort of all thing. This is typically the sound we have in words like more 
or war. Now if we move a tiny bit up again, by up in this case I mean closing the mouth, if we close our mouth a tiny bit more, we kind of get the same aw sound but it's a more closed one, so your lips are a bit more closed. So instead of aw, you get more like aw, jizz. In a lot of accents of English, this is actually the first part of the diphthong o, as in the letter o. There's a lot of different accents of course that pronounce it a bit differently, you can say o, 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 o. The difference here is where the first vowel begins and where the second vowel ends. But generally in English, a lot of the O sound and a lot of accents come from this sound. You can of course unround your lips when you say O and it becomes more like an O, 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 O. But this O sound is really not common, so you don't really need to go and practice it a lot. And then if we go to the last back vowel pair, we get to the O. And you may have noticed here that when I go up now, I start by saying the rounded vowel versus in the front vowels where I started by doing the unrounded one. The reason why is for front vowels it's more common to have the unrounded in most languages and for back vowels it's more common to have the rounded version. So the last one on the back vowels is OO. And if you paid attention now you, you'll know that this is just the same thing really. We started with the all and then we just close our mouth more and more. All, o, o, o. O is a sound that we almost have in English. In English words like cool and who or you, the vowel kind of goes halfway and then stops. That's why you can see to the left of this pair, there's a kind of U that looks a bit like a Greek omega sign, upside down. This is when your lips are kind of in between the O and the O sound, so you get this more O, O instead. So it's cool and not cool. But there are of course dialects, some accents that might say ooh instead of like cool with ooh. But ooh is a very common sound that we have in a lot of languages. Like most romance languages have it, a lot of Germanic languages have it, Korean has it too, Chinese has it, Turkish, all the Slavic languages really. Super common sound. And now if we do this ooh sound and we stop rounding our lips, we get this ooh. I'm still doing the same thing inside my mouth. Ooh, but the lips are relaxed. Ooh. And this ooh sound, if you're learning Japanese, this is the a i u e o. If you're learning Korean, this is the ooh hunger, that's just a straight horizontal line. Versus the one that has an extra tiny vertical one, that's ooh. And before we go into the middle, I want to take a look at the top left corner again. We kind of glanced over it earlier and kind of ignored it. So with the knowledge we've gotten now, we can kind of deduce that the E, U, and E, U, in between those, you'll see that there's another tiny pair here. And what this is, is when you say E, but you kind of relax it a tiny bit more. So instead of saying E, you'll say E. This is a concept known as vowel reduction. You can have varying degrees of vowel reduction. What vowel reduction means is that your tongue doesn't go all the way, it kind of stops before it reaches the point it's supposed to go to. That's why in English, for example, we don't say him, we say him. We don't say this, we say this. Because it has this kind of i sound that's almost there, but we kind of stop before we get there. You'll hear a lot of foreigners when they try to pronounce this i sound, they just use the full e instead, no reduction. Speaking of vowel reduction, do you know which one is the most commonly used vowel in English? Actually the one in the middle here. This vowel typically is called the schwa vowel. The technical term for it is the mid-central vowel. And the reason why it's so commonly used is because it kind of lies in between all the vowels. It's like halfway to u, but halfway to a, but halfway to e at the same time. It's just such a useful position to put your tongue into. And this is of course the sound that we have in most of the vowel reduced words in English. So with the concept of vowel reduction, English is a language that does a lot of it because all languages have varying degrees of vowel reduction in their spoken language. You may write something with the vowel, you may have a name for the vowel, you may have a common sound that this vowel always makes. But some languages may pronounce it a bit differently, some languages may pronounce it exactly like that. Japanese, for example, is a language that has little to zero vowel reduction, really. Unlike English, which has quite a lot of vowel reduction. And if you take a look at, for example, Russian, Russian has even more vowel reduction than English. Take, for example, the word good, which is literally written ho-ro-sho, but because the stress of the word is on the last syllable, it's pronounced as ho-ro-sho instead. This is what's known as a short form. If you use a long form, 
of it instead, it becomes HOROSHI. But because the stress now is not on the last syllable, it's now in the middle syllable, the sound changes from HAROSHO to HAROSHI. The vowel reduction in English is not that severe. But you can definitely hear it, for example, in things like HELLO. We don't say HELLO, we say HELLO, HELLO. You can also take any name in English that ends with an A, it's usually pronounced with an uh sound. Tina, Maria, Sarah. The last vowel there is always a schwa. Now if you go outwards from the schwa, my opinion is that we don't really need to focus too much on the ones that are very close to the schwa because they're sort of just different types of schwa. They're not really used in many languages as separate sounds. They're more like when they have their own vowel reduction in their language, they might use these sounds instead. But I can try to pronounce them for you. You got uh, 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 and the last one, uh, uh. What I do want to focus on though is the final pair of vowels at the top here in the middle. Here we have the u uh and the u. Uh. The u uh here is actually a sound that's used in a lot of Slavic languages. It's also used in languages like Portuguese and some Turkic languages as well. In Russian, there's a letter which when pronounced by itself is kind of a diphthong going from u uh to u. Uh. When you say the name of the letter, it's u. Uh. When you actually say it in words, it's more like an u, uh, which is this i here with a dash through it. You have all the personal pronouns in Russian, for example, like ты, мы, вы. And if we do the rounded version of this, we get the u. U is a vowel that we have in some English accents. Like some people might say goose as goose or good as good. It also exists in the Scandinavian languages. In Icelandic, Dutch has it as well, and so forth. And that is pretty much it for the vowel chart. If you feel like I went a bit too fast through this, or if you have any questions generally, feel free to write it in the comments. Don't forget I also stream on Twitch, twitch.tv slash patrickari. You can find a link in the description below. If I'm live there, you can actually interact with me and we can have a much deeper conversation, so to say. And I'm assuming that this video is going to be quite a long video, so the consonant part is going to be split into multiple parts instead. We're going to be splitting those into about three or four parts, I think because it's gonna take a bit less time to plan out. And it's gonna be a lot more fun for you to watch, of course. I highly doubt that a lot of people wanna sit down and watch like one hour of just drilling different letters and pronunciations and everything. I would love that, but not everyone's like that. So yeah, that's it. And thank you for watching. And I'll see you in the next video where we're gonna start talking about consonants. See you then.